Hey everyone, Random Randy here, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to be sharing with you my recipe for this very simple feline fine ribbed cat ear hat. This is a crochet tutorial. I will say that it is beginner level because you really only need to know how to slip stitch, chain, and double crochet in the back loop which I will show you with a yarn that is not black, so don't worry, this is just a sample to show you what it looks like. And I will have inserted some pictures so you can see what it looks like on a person, because looking at it like this, it just really looks like a tube, and that's pretty much all that it is with two of the sides sewn up. So this one is done with two strands of worsted weight yarn held together, and this one is done with one strand of bulky weight yarn. So you can choose either of those, and honestly, with the measurements used for this pattern and just the way it's set up, like I said, it's more of a recipe than a stitch-by-stitch -stitch pattern. So you could honestly make it in any yarn for someone of any size. And I will include a link to my favorite chart that I use for sizing all of my hats. It has sizes all the way from micro preemie up to extra large adult. So you're gonna want that on hand or the head of the person that you're going to be trying the hat on. You will also need a crochet hook. In this case, I am using a Susan Bates US size L or eight millimeter hook with the bamboo handle. These are super nice and I just really enjoy the inline hooks better than the regular ergonomic ones. You'll also want a tape measure, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle for sewing it all together and weaving in your ends. And the most important thing that you're going to need is the yarn. For the one that I'm going to be showing you, I have two different types of yarn that I'm going to be using together. This is the Red Heart Super Saver yarn in the Grape Fizz colorway. It's just a worsted weight acrylic with a bunch of pretty blues and purples. And I'm going to be pairing it with this Karen Simply Soft Party in the Grape colorway. So once you've got all your materials ready, let's get started. To begin, if you are going to be doing the two-stranded worsted weight method, going to hold both of your strands together and we're going to make a slip knot. I like to leave a long tail so that I have a little bit of extra not only for weaving in ends but in case I end on the same side as the ends once I sew it up then I can use it to help stitch the ears into place. So leave yourself a good hefty long tail maybe 10-ish inches and make a slip knot. The way I make my slip knots is just wrapping it around your finger, crossing it over, and pulling it both strands through the center. And you just pull, put your hook in the center, and pull on whichever side tightens it down snug against your hook. For this tutorial, I'm going to be making an adult-sized version of the hat, and for that, you're going to want to make a chain that is 9 inches in height. With an 8 millimeter hook and two strands of worsted weight yarn for me, that means 26 chains. So go ahead and make your chains, and when you're done making them, double check your measurement with the tape measure. That is, that is 26 chains, and I'm just going to measure it really quick to make sure it's good. And you do want it to be a little bit longer because you're actually going to be losing two of your chains. So yes, right on. Nine and a half inch long chain. So that your finished hat will be nine inches tall. 
If you want it to be snug right against your head without extra to roll up a brim, you can do 24 chains instead of 26. So now we're going to start with our double crochets. To do a double crochet, you just yarn over. We're going to be going into the third chain from the hook. So you insert your hook in the stitch, yarn over, pull up another loop. So you now have three, yarn over again, go through your center two, yarn over, and go through the last two stitches on the hook. I'm going to show you the double crochet kind of slow another time, and then you can just finish up the row. Yarn over, go through the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, go through the center two loops. Yarn over and go through the last two loops. And now go ahead and finish up your double crochets to the end of the row and I will meet you there. reach the end of our first row you should have 24 double crochet stitches not counting your beginning chain two for this pattern it doesn't count in your stitch count but it's needed to make your edges straight so now that we've reached the end of the row just going to chain two and turn the work over now to get the ribbed effect, we're going to be working double crochets through the back loop only. So you're going to yarn over to start your double crochet. And if you look here at the stitch, you can see that it sort of looks like a V. You're going to be going under only this back portion, the back leg of the V. Normally you'd go through both like this. But in this case, we're going to be going over this front one and only through the back portion. So just like a regular double crochet, yarn over, so you've now got three, yarn over, go through your center two, yarn over, and go through the remaining two. To show you going through the back loop again, yarn over, I'm gonna insert through just that back leg of the stitch, yarn over, pull up your loop, yarn over, your center two, yarn over, go through the last two. Now you're going to do that all the way to the end of the row and I will meet you there for instructions for the rest of the hat. Now we have come to the end of row two and you are going to chain two and turn your work and carry on double crocheting through the back loop only until your piece is the length that you need it to be to fit around the intended wearer's head. My typical rule of thumb when making hats is to make them half an inch or one inch smaller than the intended circumference of the wearer's head. But as this is made with a large hook and is extremely stretchy, unstretched, this strip is 18 inches long and this will fit a person with a 21 to 22 ish head circumference comfortably. So to make it the size that I wanted it to be without it being too big, I actually did 20 rows of the double crochet and then I did one final row 
here of single crochet, still through the back loop only to maintain the ridged look because it needed to be just a teeny bit longer, but not quite as long as the full size of the double crochet. So we're going to fold our piece in half and we're going to put it together. We're going to be slip stitching Going to be slip stitching it together all the way along here. As you can see, I always leave a loop up when I have to take my hook out of my work so that if cat or child attacks it, it won't completely unravel my work. So now that you've got this back on your hook, So now that the yarn is back on the hook, we're going to be going through the way that I finished my rows, the parts that are folded together touching are actually the right sides of the hat, the outside edge of the hat. It doesn't really matter with the ribbed look, but you may notice that if you put the wrong sides together and then seam it and flip it, there may be a weird bump going on. So personal preference. The row that I started with, which I consider to be the right side facing, is lined up with the right side. We're going to be going through the remaining loop of our starting chain and then bringing it back together with the other side. So we're going to just go through the loop that's left from the starting chain going to be going through just the front loop of the stitch on the opposite side. From underneath, grab onto the yarn, you're going to pull it through both stitches and through the remaining loop on your hook. That is a slip stitch. We're going to do that again through the remaining loop on the chain, through the front loop of the other side. You can leave a really long tail and whip stitch it. Personally, I just find the slip stitch to be more secure, less likely to unravel. And I've washed hats that I've made this way dozens of times and I have yet to have my ends come undone. So go ahead and just keep slip stitching down to the end of this row. And a big problem some people have when they slip stitch a seam is that they do it too tightly. So make sure your tension is a little bit loose or it's going to make your piece bow together. Now that we have our side seam finished, as you can see on the inside there is a slight ridge but on the outside there is no funky ridge to be seen, which is perfect. So my personal preference to have as few ends as possible to weave in is I like to whip stitch across the top so that then you don't have this bump along the top as well, it'll make your hat slightly taller as two. So I'm going to leave a very, very long tail for whip stitching across the top and then stitching down the corner to make the ear stand out. I'd say somewhere in the realm of two to three feet worth of tail. Then you can snip it off with your scissors. And to make sure that it doesn't unravel, I like to just do a slip stitch or a chain and 
pull my yarn all the way through so now it's not going anywhere. You can set your hook aside. If you'd like to, you can slip stitch across the top as well. I just have found that I prefer the way it looks when I whip stitch it. As I said, this is more of a recipe than a hard and fast pattern. So now for whip stitching it together, pretty much just go through whatever loops are available on one side, come back around over the top, Go through a loop of each side, pull it through. Make sure you don't pull it too snug or again, you're going to have issues with the top of the hat bowing and looking weird. You pretty much just look for portions that are near each other. I like to go through whichever loops are closest. but they won't always completely match. And as you can see with the way I ended it, I now have this extra tail over here for actually making the ear on this side. But if you haven't had it work out that way for you, you'll just be able to take an extra piece of yarn and stitch the ear into place that way. Go ahead and just keep doing your whip stitch all the way down to the end of the other side. And I will meet you there once you are finished with that. So we have now reached the opposite side and going to reach in through the bottom of the hat and take your tapestry needle, thread it through and take it to the other side of your work and pull it all the way through. Then we're going to flip the hat right side out. You want to poke your corners really good, just like with sewing, to make sure that they will be sharp corners rather than rounded over and more dog-like than cat-like. The easiest way that I have discovered to figure out where your ear should be placed is to take your hat top and divide it into approximate thirds. So I'm going to have the ear for this side start here and the ear for this side start here. And then you're just going to bring it down in a straight line across over to here. You can use a stitch marker if you'd like to mark the place. I found that that is the easiest way for me. Or you can just eyeball it if you're comfortable doing that. You can exactly measure if you're really super worried about it. But the way that it fits on the head, it doesn't have to be super, super ultra precise. And once you've got it marked out on one side, you can just go across to the other side and mark there as well. Or like I said, you can eyeball it. That's totally fine too. So now you have your yarn in the corner over here, which does not help you get to here. So what I do is go back through a few of the stitches across the top. Just kind of weave it back and forth to get it there. Because if you were to just drag the yarn underneath the inside, it's it's going to leave a big weird dangly string inside and that's not, nobody wants that. Just kind of go back and forth through both layers. 
as close to the top as possible. Or you could go down the side and start there from where your marker is. As long as you end up making a triangle, it doesn't really matter which direction you decide to go. There, and I'll do one more. There we go. Alright, now we're going to just be going back and forth through both layers, making small stitches so that you'll be stitching a line that's going to go from here over to your marker. For that, I'm just going to put my needle through both sides through just like doing a regular straight stitch and hand sewing and here you just go back through about a stitch over come up through I'm just going to keep going back and forth with little stitches and pulling it tight until you've gotten all the way down to your marker You want to make them small stitches, unless you want the stitches to be visible. You could use a contrasting yarn and make it a design element if you wanted to. If you were making something like a Frank and Kitty hat, which would be kind of cute. reach the marker on the side. I'm going to take the yarn back to the inside to weave it in. If you're not particularly worried about it because your yarn is all the same color, you can weave it in on the outside. I prefer to do it on the inside of the hat just to get it completely concealed. So now to weave in the end, I just go through stitches here and there, trying to go in opposite directions because a piece of fabric generally does not get pulled in all directions at the same time. So as long as you're weaving back and forth, very unlikely that your piece is going to unravel. And I like to make little partial knots to hold the yarn even more securely. Rather than pulling this completely through, I go back through the loop of the yarn, cinch it down right up close to the stitch, so now there's a knot in there. You could just cut it off there if you're comfortable with that. I prefer to weave it in more than that. Personal preference, I guess. But as I said, I've yet to have a piece unravel in the wash, so I'd say it's a pretty good system. Once you have it woven in to your satisfaction, snip off the ends. Now you have one ear that is completely stitched down. So go ahead and do the same with the other side. And I will meet back up with you once you're done with that. And now that you have your ears all stitched into place, once you put it on your head, it will look like you have cat ears. And as I said, depending upon your length, it may be long enough to roll up the brim. Or if you want, you can even wear it the same length, but a little bit slouchy. So there are three samples here, and I will tell you the yarn that's in all of them in case you're interested. This is Red Heart Super Saver in the Macaw colorway mixed with Karen Simply Soft Party in Royal Sapphire. 
This yarn is the Deborah Norville Serenity Chunky Sequins yarn. This is the bulky weight yarn. And it's... The colorway is Snow Crystal. And this third one is Red Heart Super Saver Day Glow and Red Heart Super Saver just plain black. In the back. Oh. That's great. What? Can you get that out of the back? Probably not. Okay, please don't play with that. That way. Okay, bye. Because you wear it. It's nice shiny. Mm -hmm. All good. Thank you, buddy. These hats are super quick and easy to make, and they are yarn eaters if you're using two strands of worsted weight yarn and trying to work down a stash, as I am. I'm also preparing for a craft fair, so these are really good for that. They're a super quick make, and with Halloween coming up, they make a fantastic last-minute costume, or they're good just for pretend play for kids. They're also good for cosplay conventions if you don't want to go totally all out with a costume. As I said, super quick and easy to make. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any questions with the pattern or recipe or anything, leave them down in the comment section below. And I look forward to seeing your finished projects on Instagram. My Instagram is just random randies ramblings, all three words together, no apostrophes, no spaces. And you can use the hashtag felinefinerr to show off your finished objects on Instagram. Or you can join us in the Facebook group, which is Random Randy's Random Family. And we hang out there, share links to patterns, show off our projects, and just generally talk about life. So look forward to seeing you in one of those places, and thank you so much everybody for watching. Bye!